This is the Common Good Radio Show brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission. I am Pastor John McLean. I am back. Sorry, sorry you missed me past week, and then I was here, and then I wasn't here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I am yeah. with my, the best buddy anybody can ask for, the most motivational motivator that a man could possibly dream to have by his side, the best co-host that Tucson has ever seen, <laughs> and I am so thankful to have the the uh, common door of I Believe in Myself coaching. Go to I Believe in Myself or I... What, what is I believe in myself dot org. Go to my I believe myself dot <laughs> org today to connect with my friend, Mr. Andreas Ruiz. Yeah, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Is that good that enough? Was, is that, dude, is that, I feel is my fl- I, flavor flavor hyping you up. Flavor yeah. Flavor more, flavor. Nah, flavor flavor ain't got nothing on it. Man. They ain't got me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, we are here. We are back, back together. Um, next week you won't get Andreas, so soak him up like like a biscuit with butter today because that um, sounds good right now. Yeah, doesn't yeah. it seem delicious? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With some That's gravy, what I got. Yeah. I'm just like, we got an artist in the studio, so I I'm just trying to like, I'm up, trying to know? bring the flavor. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm trying to bring it right today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but actually, <clears throat> speaking of who we got in the studio, why don't you go ahead and tell us who we got in the studio today, bud? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, the uh, we have the amazing uh, Melissa and Mel, uh, who are with. Um, I just gotta, I just gotta get this stuff right here. Galeria Mitotera, I like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we also have uh, Alejandra Baltasar, who uh, Carlat, who's with a uh, drug-free uh, communities coordinator of the South Tucson Operation Prevention, uh, Intervention, and Treatment Coalition, which is also AKA Stop It and mm. at PPEP. So yeah, we're really blessed to have them here, and um, you know, I'm just really excited to hear more about what they do and uh all the amazing things that they're doing for the community i mean i already heard uh a few of the things that mellow uh uh does and you know just so it's a real pleasure to have you guys here yeah yeah that's yeah, awesome and i'm glad you did the introduction because i would have not made it through that yeah that was you a mouthful of that. stuff yeah, that was for yeah. sure yeah <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah i mean I'm, I'm so grateful to have you guys and let's get started with alejandra and just tell us a little bit about the stop it coalition and uh what do you do Thank you, everyone, and I'm so excited to be here and to tell you to tell you about uh, my new <coughs> role in the community of South Tucson. Mm-hmm. I am the uh, drug-free community prevention coordinator for the community of South Tucson mm. through PEP, uh, which is stands for Portable Practical Educational Preparation. Mm. Um, so what we do, basically my role as a coordinator, prevention coordinator, is to um, create a safe and drug-free community mm-hmm. space for the youth in South Tucson because I believe if we support, or we all believe in our coalition that if we support the youth, the whole community benefits. Mm-hmm. So um, this is how we do in this project, in this coalition, it's to help them grow, to help them succeed in life, and to give them a safe and beautiful community. That's nice. beautiful. Yeah, awesome. And I mean, uh, do you also like, um, like with, uh, what about parents? Do you include them in what you do as well? or? Oh, yeah, of course. I believe that, you know, having the parents being part of the success of their kids and to have them, you know, being all part of a beautiful community. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we do a lot of things with the parents. Uh, We want them to be part and join the forces. Um, So we we can have in our coalition coalition we can have the parents as volunteers mm, we can invite cool. the parents to uh provide workshops mm, uh nice. and also to learn ways on how they can talk to their kids in terms of you know addiction um alcohol misuse drugs misuse but also in terms of being positive in terms of you know helping them with their self-esteem um and Right now, there's you know we're going through a really critical time with the overdose and fentanyl oh, and all yes. that in our in our uh-huh. in the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yep. um so right now we want really want to uh, work <coughs> with the parents to help the kids stay safe in our communities, um and we need the parents for support so we can give the parents any information mm-hmm. on you know how they can help their youth and in terms helping them in their struggles and so we have a lot of information we have workshops that Mm. the parents can attend uh we can uh and they're all free 
and nice. we have Power of Parents, which is a workshop for alcohol. We also have the RX 360 and May MJ 360, which is for drugs and mm -hmm. uh, marijuana. So nice. yeah, and like I said, they're all free. Nice. That's, That's amazing. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely much needed in the community. And I mean, <clears throat> and well, I guess we'll kind of like we'll circle on this a little bit before we kind of we move on to the next to topic. Okay. What if because I, I know in my work, working with the unhoused community, and whenever I go out and I do outreach on the street, this fentanyl thing is mm -hmm. is wild. Like, I, you know, I guess they're calling it the blues, you know, yes. this, like because it's a blue pill that's out there. And I was under the impression that, you know, there was this epidemic going on that heroin was being laced with fentanyl and people were dying because of that. But now it seems like people are just taking fentanyl, so they're just mm -hmm. racing right to the punch. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what you know, what have you seen around that, and like, and what do you think you know can be done to c combat that? Because that seems just completely nonsensical. As much as mm -hmm. non as nonsensical as doing heroin in itself is, the idea to do fentanyl, which is you know ten times worse, mm -hmm. and you know has such a high rate of fatality. You know what is you know what is that about? Well. Uh, I think the problem with that is that you can't really n know uh, what which one is the real and which one is the fake fentanyl. Mm -hmm. So I think it's mixed in, mixed in a lot of drugs, which is like you said, makes it a hundred times more powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we have workshops, we have all the information to provide in terms of because a lot of people are not familiar. They hear it, but they mm. really don't know how mm -hmm. it acts and how it can be really accessible for the youth yes. yeah. through social media these days. <clears throat> yeah. So we yeah. have a lot of information. We have workshops that we want the parents, you mm -hmm. know, to be mm -hmm. part of for them to know what's going on in their kids' lives. And also, uh, through the coalition with Drug Free Pima, uh, we offer free Narcan, which helps with overdoses. Mm -hmm. And we have that available for the community, you know, at different events. Uh, with my job, mm -hmm. um, I partner with different artists. We have we have partnered with different agencies, with different local organizations nice. uh, to spread the word and for people to know and the community to know what's going on mm -hmm. and for people to know how to use Narcan in, tr in case they, you know, face a situation when there's someone who is going through an overdoses and we offer workshops presentations and how to use it and how to save life in our li lives in our community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're about 30 seconds so we have to go to the, to our first break give us like a maybe a story or you know an example of kind of you know the the help you've been able to do and how you know who you who you've been able to affect with the work that you've done i believe the community i do believe in our and our youth and they're the future. So we really want them to be safe, especially in South Tucson. Mm -hmm. uh, and we wanna care for them and we want to make sure that, you know, they all have the correct information mm -hmm. and just to be safe and, and have a beautiful and safe community that they can go play outside and they can go and have a, you know, succeed and, and, and thrive in their lives. Nice. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Common Good radio show. The volume was down. I was deaf for a moment, yeah, but oh. I am your coach and speaker, Andres Ruiz, alongside the Pastor John McLean yeah. back in the house. Uh, newly married, a man. Yeah, uh, congratulations. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we missed you, man. But it's I was, okay. I, I, I forgave you. I hey, forgave you. Well, you're going to have to because I was in a better place. I know. And I'm not, not dead and in heaven, but yeah, I was in the, <laughs> Atlanta getting married. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, great. So congrats. Yeah. Thank uh, you. So shout out to Candace and so yes, getting back, like I said, uh, we have some amazing people here and you know, we talked to Alejandra. She shared some amazing information that is very beneficial to us in the community. But now uh, we want to get to uh, our other guests, Mel and Melissa. And I know that we Mel talked and Mel. Mel that's and fun. Mel. I know. Yeah, that's the. It was Many meant to be. Many people in the community refer us to us as the Mel. The Mel. The Mel. Yeah, makes okay. perfect sense. Yeah. I love that. So yeah, get, yeah the Mel's. <laughs> and you know, we talked a little bit about Galeria Mitotera and how we, I, I mean, like, how are you using this uh, in the community? Tell us a little bit about uh, you know Galeria Mitotera. Using um, the Galeria Mitotera, what we decided to do. Talk a little closer. A little closer. Uh, what we decided to do as um, 
as artist was to take the art to the inner city, mm -hmm. to the city of South Tucson, and to give people of color um, artists the opportunity to to show their work and mm -hmm. show their um, their made goods. And it's been four years, and it's been really beautiful to see the growth of a community. Mm. But what would you add to that, Melissa? I would say also that we um, we really strive to make our space a very safe and welcoming space for community members to come, not just only for art, but for to be in community with each other in different ways. Like we, we partner a lot with PEP and Stop It and invite them and other organizations to come in and provide information to our community in a very... Um, you know, safe and, and welcoming way where um, it's intertwined with the art and the makers. So it, mm -hmm. it makes it a fun way to get information out into our community, like through COVID testing and mm. um, vaccine clinics and, mm -hmm. and things such as that. So it's not just about um, going and shopping, but we, we have we have different ways of connecting with our community members. That's awesome. Yeah. And like, what do, what do you feel like? Can you tell us like how, how this experience has helped? Well, not only, I mean, sure, it's helped you guys, but also, like, how has it helped uh, the community? What have you seen from, you know, this, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, like, what you put out there? Like, what have you seen in your experience in the last four or five years? Just having a space, having the space um, revitalized is where, um, located in the city of South Tucson, mm -hmm. on the corner of, of where 4th and 28th Street. Mm -hmm. And when we first moved in, there was... Um, a huge uh, drug use uh, area just <coughs> on our same block, mm. um, big trafficking area. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a, you know, different. It's a different site of community yeah. and mm. bringing art and being um, a place to bring community together. Mm -hmm. It brought, um, made me think of the question you asked earlier to, to Alejandra about, um, about how do you keep people from drugs mm -hmm. and art, does that mm. art changes that mm -hmm. quality of life we look at things because it's accessible to all just like the bicycle mm. you know it's mm. it's a mm -hmm. form of transportation that many use as a sometimes as a means to transportate themselves from place to place and in others it's uh, a form of meditation mm. you know they go out and they ride mm -hmm. uh, that same for the art um a lot of people don't know how to express themselves but when they come to the location in the city of south tucson um they get to have those feelings. They, mm. they get those feelings are evoked, um, and when you do that, you see that the community blossom, mm. um, and the community is so diverse there that we do have um, veterans that are homeless, um, and they're well known. I know one of them by name. His name's David, and um, you know what? It just takes a little bit of talking to, and sometimes um, inspiration that they see you outside cleaning, mm. they see you outside painting, um, or gardening, and adding color to that area. Um, their their minds start to change. You know, mm. there's some there's there's even some street walkers that um, they would take time out to hang out with me and like pull weeds and like hmm. just chit chat about normal stuff. Wow. Mm. So art can do a lot in mm. an environment. Yeah, I don't know if you write poetry or you're a writer at all, but you should. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I appreciate. Yeah, that. like definitely. I yeah. I look forward to writing to reading your poetry and to reading the stuff that you write because just the way that you articulate stuff mm -hmm. it's just it's like a beautiful story being told yeah so, thank so, you yeah, I let me leave myself a street disciple oh yeah nice, nice. You know, a fisher yeah. of men out there in the yeah in the open so that you can find me i can oh. empathize i can Dang, empathize cool, definitely man. yeah certainly with um you know being a pastor i'm not i always tell people particularly people who first meet me I'm like you're kind of young to be a pastor i'll be like one i'm not probably not your grandma's pastor one so she's probably she's not i'm not gonna be her flavor <laughs> but two there's a lot of people that i've been able to fish out of the sea that other people can't fish out of the sea because of the way i am and who i am mm, so mm -hmm, yeah, i can mm -hmm. see you're another cat like that but uh, even a, even outside of that i encourage you to, <coughs> to put you know to put it down put it down on paper because one we as a as humanity need that and two, you're going to see another cool gift that you got by, by doing that. And, and, and I say that from experience. Like I, so many, for so many years, I told myself I'm not a writer. I'm not an author. I'm not an artist. I'm not all this stuff. But here I am, all those things. So, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to be the inspire of the mm -hmm. inspiree, but you're just you're, I love you're it. I was going to say amen. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, um, tell us a little bit about like how has 
uh, you know, art inspired both of you in your lives. I don't know if you want to share just. Oh, boy. Well, uh, Melissa, is it okay if I mention it? Okay, so um, I was kicked out of my house a lot. And, mm. you know, my family didn't have money. and But I enjoy art, you know. So it was easy for me to get accessibility to drawing because I was a graffiti artist. Mm. But, I mean, that happens in, a, in, a, in another light. You know, and that, and actually in the darkness where you go out at night and you paint and it's illegal. Well, one of those nights I thought I was really smart coming in, sneaking back inside my house. And my mom's like, she caught me. She's like, you know what? I'm tired of yelling at you. I'm going to tell you once. Do you want to pay the city or do you want the city to pay you? Mm. And I was like, Dang. wow, she slapped me in the face with value. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that man. Value of self. You Dang. know, I didn't even realize wow. that. That's cool. I she saw something in me, and mm. that's beautiful. That ever changed my life uh, to where I'm getting paid for what I can come up with. You yeah. know, and that's and cool, man. you know, communicate yeah. through my illustrations. Um, I use that ability now to communicate um, a lot of social political views, uh, just so you know what. Not to that we would argue with each other, but so that maybe we can understand the other side's view mm -hmm. in a peaceful manner. And we got about 45 seconds till we, we pop out of here again. You got, you got a pop-up coming up? You guys want to tell us about that? We do. Um, we actually have, um, well, we have a pop-up on Saturday. I think this airs on Sunday. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but so um, one, but one we passed. have one, one past. <laughs> other than the one that we just had um, yesterday. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so <laughs> Sunday... Um, February 20th, we have, in partnership with another organization, um, Avenidas, in South Tucson, from 9 to 2, we're going to have a reinvestment day in the community, okay. and we're going to have um, a vaccine clinic. Pima County Health will be there. Um, Drug-Free Pima will be there. Stop it. And we will have live art. Mel will be creating a mural um, nice. that will be a PSA regarding um, the importance of of being COVID safe in our community. Uh, there will also, we will also have um, gift cards out for community members who get their vaccines. Um. Body, got a little snack, hang in there. We got a, an excellent second half of the show with you. And uh, I'm, if, if you don't remember, this is the Common Good Radio Show brought to you by Veteran Rescue Commission. I'm Pastor John McLean here with Andreas Ruiz. Yes, I'm taking Spanish. No big deal. <laughs> and, uh, que bueno. <laughs> que bueno. <laughs> <laughs> <Muy> bueno. <laughs> <laughs> sí. <Excellent>. <laughs> and we have our favorite guest in the whole entire world yep. here in studio with us. She goes by the name of Dr. Jennifer Herrera in, in the in the fancy places, but she goes by the name of Dr. J among her friends. Yes, there you go. yeah, actually among correct. her friend friends, they call her Jennifer. But it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like it I just, call I call it, her Jennifer. I know it tastes I like, bad I like in my mouth. Jennifer. When I say it. I mean, I, I like Dr. J too, Thank but. You. Yeah. I, mean, I like Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I always say, hey, Jennifer. It's, yeah, every, real, it's my real you, name. You know, one yeah. time when I, the first time that I spoke at, at uh, your school, I said, yeah, and you know Jennifer, and everybody's like, who's that? <laughs> oh, I mean, Dr. J. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Oh, you never <laughs> yeah. Doctor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. I guess. I don't have a real name to them. I, I guess <laughs> that's what happens when you're a superhero. You, you got know. your superhero name, and I you got your real there name. You, go. you got <laughs> Peter Parker, and you got Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If not, I saw I saw something in the movie the other day that I thought was was interesting about about Superman. Superman is he's one of the few superheroes who actually gets in a costume to hide his identity. Oh, oh that's true, huh? Yeah, like he wakes up Superman, <laughs> and he has mm. to hide and become a normie. Mm -hmm. to, Clark to not be a superhero. Mm. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, that's but that, aside, that's aside for the point. I, mean, I yeah, guess that's yeah, what happens no, when yeah. you have a, have a yeah. superintendent of a school on. He's sorry, like he gives Super some something. ammunition to bring to the kids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, anyway, speaking of a superintendent of of a school here with us. Tell us about Tucson International Academy. I mean, let's just say yeah. no one's ever heard of Tucson International Academy before. Let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Well, Tucson International Academy is a network of four schools. Each school is kindergarten through 12th grade. Mm. That's what makes us a little bit different. And each school is very small. It's like 100 to 150 kids mm. per school. So kinder through 12th grade, 150 kids. There's a lot of combination classes, and the older kids are a part of the younger kids' lives. Mm -hmm. So everyone has to get along. They have to be on their best behavior. Um, behavior isn't usually a problem. Every now and then we'll have a something come up, but 
we always say, listen, would you want your little brother or sister coming home saying certain words or doing what you did? Mm -hmm. No. So don't do it. And they just don't. They look Mm -hmm. out for each other. Um, It's uh, quite friendly. It's really fun. And Mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh, the older kids are the rock stars at our schools. Mm -hmm. So if you're an older student at Tucson International Academy, you're going to be a a hero. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we have the four schools. It's kinder through 12th grade. We're 100% of our graduates from our schools. Um, get accepted to two or more colleges. So nice. we're college prep oriented. We are. Um, we don't believe you have to go to college to be successful, but we want to open that door mm-hmm. by having mm-hmm. their academics in place and having their um, their activity levels and their experiences to have it be ready so that they can go to college. Mm-hmm. And nice. it's it's really fun, and we celebrate a lot. You know, and the thing I, I talk about a lot. I mean, especially since you talk about obviously the. 100% of the students that go to TIA get accepted, you know, into college. And we talk a lot about how even though it is a public school, because, you know, anybody can go to and it's publicly funded, it's almost like having a private school experience because of that college prep experience. But I think another kind of, like, caveat that I don't talk about enough about Tucson International Academy, even though every single uh, staff member you have come on here, every single student you have come on here say it, but it's like, I want to like double mention it. Like they talk about how it's like a family. Yeah. But the coolest mm. thing I think about, not only how it's like a family, particularly if like being a father of several children of s- differing ages. ages yeah. yeah. Being able to be like, oh, there's a school where I can send all my kids to the same school. That mm-hmm. happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. It's, it's kind of yeah. neat because if, you know, these days we're so busy and it's like you have this kid in music, you have this kid in baseball, you have this kid who's taking karate. Mm. And so you're already driving them around like a taxi. <laughs> then you got three right. schools. You got the elementary school for the younger ones. You got the middle school for mm-hmm. the middle ones and you've got the high school. Mm-hmm. So you got three different school activity calendars and then they have their, their private interest groups and mm-hmm. it's a lot. And mm-hmm. I mean, having any sense of family, it gets um, difficult. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that we did too is... It's like it's a chance for even cousins can go to the same school. Mm. So families come to watch our, for example, our single de Mayo, which will be coming up in on single de Mayo. Mm. <laughs> and um, we will have folkloric dancing and music and mariachis and, and food mm. and games. And it's a really big, fun event. Have you been to one of these events yet? Um, I don't think so. I, How have we maybe, not been to one I of these know. events? Oh my gosh, yet? I haven't so have invited to to you. The next one, Cinco de Mayo, we are there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't care what yeah, else is going come. on. You know, and yeah. that's that's what I love about yeah. the school is that they do all these things for the kids to get to experience something that they've never probably experienced before. And then just today, uh, I was listening to Dr. J. Like after I gave my presentation, there was uh, uh, something new that you guys are bringing yes. to TIA. Tell us a little bit about that. The JA. Sure. Uh, yeah, tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Well, Junior Achievement is a, an international organization, but it did um, it has roots here in Tucson. Mm-hmm. And so we got like the best of the best people who, who do JA. And they come to our school and they allow kids to have a chance with businesses. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole concept is business and financial literacy. I think there's there's five pillars and I'm still kind of learning the all the, the ins and outs of it. But one thing I know about it is anybody who's a teacher and they hear that we have JA, they're like, oh, that was the best day at school. I'll always remember it. Mm-hmm. And they had like one day the whole year and it was called JA Day. Mm-hmm. And they remember that. Of all things, that's, cool. that's what they remember. That's so awesome. I think it must be something phenomenal. So we're going to have our first JA day okay. uh, in two weeks. And what does that entail? That's all day long where the kids are doing business-oriented ori- activities. So it's mm. like financial literacy, again, entrepreneurship, uh-huh. um, uh, setting up um, just like practicing leadership. Like let's try to get you get your <laughs> team to do this, you get your team mm. to do that. Um, and the big kids at our school are going to teach the younger kids Mm, so the mm. big kids have already gone through two intensive trainings nice. where they come and it's like a half day where they're sitting there and they're learning and they're practicing presenting and they're nervous, but they're excited because they know the little kids. Some mm. of them, my cousins in that class, my little kid is in, my little brother is in that class mm-hmm. and they're excited to do it and they're going to be leading, they're going to be demonstrating leadership to the little ones at our school and it's just perfect because we're K-12. Mm-hmm. So the, the older ones are going to teach the youngers. That's super cool. That's really cool, yeah. yeah. And I'm glad that you're doing that for them because those uh like the 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 financial literacy entrepreneurship business and all that stuff is something that i mean they're gonna probably need for the rest of their life and Mm. oh yeah who teaches financial literacy 
nobody. Like, I mean, you it's know what I mean? It's hard to you, get it in. Of I mean. course, yeah, yeah. But we have to because then, you know, they'll learn about money. They'll learn how to take care of money. They'll learn how to invest whatever they need to do. But Beautiful. This is the Common Good Radio Show <laughs> brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission, highlighting the good in our community. And uh, speaking of the good in our community, we have Dr. Jennifer Herrera. 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 Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Herrera. Yeah, no, yeah. Everybody says Herrera. Herrera. <laughs> yeah, I say, the, I say the H wrong, the R, R real it's well. It's Herrera. 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 If, if my Korean <laughs> Spanish <laughs> teacher was here right now, she would, <laughs> she would uh, be proud that I got that right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> He's claiming victory. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the uh. superintendent of Tucson International Academy here with us on the Common Good Radio Show, Brought to you by Veteran Rescue Mission. I'm Pastor John McLean here with Andreas Ruiz. Uh, Andreas Ruiz. Andale. There yeah. you go. With, I believe, Andale. myself coaching, yes. and he is here coaching us to another great segment with our favorite guest. Man, yes. it's just, it's almost as if we don't even do a radio show when Dr. J is here. It's just like, <laughs> I know. let's just pal around. <laughs> with yeah, I know. It's just like we're having lunch or something. Or something. It just happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and today, uh, another thing that I like about uh, TIA is like, they say they, they're bringing JA, they're bringing personal development, they're trying to help out their teachers. And I know that you have a, a leadership uh, team to help out your, your uh, teachers and, you know, I think that that's really important that you're teaching them that and you see the value in that. And like, how, like, how do you feel that that has helped out not only yourself, mm. but your staff and everybody around you? With- oh, yeah. It's it, to me, it's imperative. I mean, look what all we've gone through the past three years, mm. you know, two years of COVID. It's like, uh, are mm-hmm. we teaching in person? Are we teaching online? Are mm-hmm. we, and what does that look like? And are we going to get paid by the state? And, and, you know, teachers were like, oh my God, my mother's sick, you know, and then all the deaths, we had eight deaths in our small mm, little community man. that my husband ended up doing the um, services for. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of death. Mm. And that must have been hard on him too, you know, oh, yeah. just to be able to. Yeah. I mean, um, we lost a lot. He lost some of his friends, just mm-hmm. like you were saying. I mean, yeah. it takes a toll on oh you. My we're God, we're all a little too young to start losing friends yeah. yes. our age, you know, mm. so. And um, so it's been a lot. And yes, you can navigate storms, but it's just so much more peaceful to mm. have somebody to to help you navigate them, to mm-hmm. remind you of some skills or even to introduce something new and to stay focused on the right things, you know. So, I mean, today, uh, Coach Andres was at our school today doing a teacher in service. Mm. And he did a one hour um, development class and it was excellent. It was just what they needed, I think. Mm. Yeah, they, they had yeah. a good time. Um, we talked about mastering their emotions and just how to deal with stress and overwhelm. And they were really receptive. I was very proud mm. of them. Even one of the teachers there admitted to like, you know, so having some bad habits and then start implementing some good habits mm. that, you know, it could be life changing. And she just starts, like you said, she said, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to stop looking at my phone so much. Mm. Those little habits can go such a long way. Mm. And I mean, the productivity can go up, the energy can go up, the yeah. attitude can go up. And it was just really cool to see them you know, be able to do that. And we also did forgiveness meditations. I saw some tears. I saw Mm. some people, you know, getting emotional and it was so beautiful. We talked, you talked about this, how like forgiveness, uh, one of the kids mentioned forgiveness and the power of forgiveness and man, forgiveness is a Mm -hmm. life changer. Uh, I've seen like the, 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 the power that it can do like heal one Mm. to just forgive you know what I mean? Like, what are your thoughts about forgiveness? Like, oh, man, that's the a key, right? I mm. mean, we're all different. Nobody's going to agree with you on every single thing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the way people disagree can leave like a, a scar or it can leave a, an open wound or it can rip an, a wound open again because you got it from someone else when you were younger. Mm-hmm. So um, you have to constantly have like a steady diet of releasing mm. judgment, releasing emotions, uh, releasing you know, anything that you're going to try to hold on to because everything you hold on to is dead weight. Mm -hmm. It's just going to slow you down. It's going to weigh you down. It's going to keep you down. Mm -hmm. And it depends on what you want in life, but none of us really want to be down. Mm -hmm. We want to have freedom. We want to make our life. We want to enjoy it. And you can't. If you're going to carry around a bunch of unforgiveness, you're just not going to do as well. I mean, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. It's not a religious statement. It's not an academic statement. It's just like a human statement. It's like (laughs) we have to learn to um, let it go. And the more you can learn to do that um, and the faster you can do it authentically, you can't fake it, um, 
boy, the quicker you can move on with your life and the quicker you can develop the next thing and go mm. on to the joy that you're wanting to have. So in our school, we have the Peace Builder Program. In the Peace Builder Program, there's like certain um, things, you know, I pledge to give up put downs. And one of them is I will right the wrongs that I have committed. Mm. And so how do you right the wrong? Well, that's a little hard to do sometimes. I mean, righting a wrong, I mean, you, if you stole from somebody, you might not have the money to give it back. Mm. But mm-hmm. You have to right the wrong. So part of it is saying, I'm sorry, admitting mm-hmm. you did it. Mm-hmm. And um, then I'm we mad. take it from there and figure out what the actual, you know, rollout of, of um, compensation will be. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't do that. They'll just mm. say, oh, well, you shouldn't have left it laying there. It got stolen. <laughs> at, at our school, literally, you could put your purse down and it's n- nothing's going to happen to it. Yeah. Because mm. at our school, they, it's like what we've trained them to do is it's, it's not snitching. It's making the environment safe. Mm-hmm. And if you fail to report something that you see happen, like somebody took something out of someone's wallet or purse or, or personal belongings, then you've now made a hole in our security. Mm-hmm. So because you didn't report it. If you report it, the person has a chance to quickly put it back, apologize and, and change their way. Mm-hmm. But once they take it and then the lying starts, I didn't take it, I didn't take it. Well, we've got cameras everywhere. Goodness, we can find out anything. Mm-hmm. I always tell the kids, really, are you going to make me look on the camera or can you just say you did it and we just make it right? Mm. I did it yesterday, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And this kid came up and whispered in my ear, I did it. And after he oh, said wow. it, I said, well, thanks, everybody, for your time. Just think about what I said and um, just talk to me later if you want. And then I just told his teacher, send him up later after when nobody's looking. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and then we talked about it. He, he was so embarrassed. He said, I don't know why I did that. You know, uh, here it is back. And, and that was that. Mm-hmm. All done. And, <clears throat> and we didn't have to give some big, you know, consequence. Like, I'm going to call your mother. You're going to be suspended. You're mm-hmm. going to, you know, you're a bad human being. No, it was a weakness. And now we just have to say, you know, this probably hurt your reputation among the adults here at school. So if something else goes missing, they're going to look to you. Mm-hmm. He understood. He goes, I know. But he goes, I won't let it happen again. And he yeah. said, I'll report if I see someone else. So I just love it. Look how quick he turned around. That's yeah. just yesterday. That's mm-hmm. just wow. yesterday. And I'm telling you, every week I got <coughs> something like that happening. But if you can get people to admit what they've done, um, then they're taking the other end. So the person that's had it taken from them, they can forgive a lot easier when they know there's there's a, a system of justice that is mm. gentle. It's not so extreme that everybody gets upset and it's peaceful. Mm. And so I love that about the Peace Builder Program. And mm. they just really give cool. you the words, what to say to the kids, you know, how to say it and and how to do it. Really, I feel like I'm a negotiator. I'm like, look, mm. I can do this the hard way or the easy way. Yeah. You know, <laughs> who set off the fire alarm? Like the I need to know stick. right now. I'm going to count to three and I want you all to put, point to the person. <laughs> One, two, three. And I'm telling you, in my schools, whoosh, they will all go to the <laughs> And the kid was like, really? All you guys are snitches? I go, no, they like peace in their environment and you're not peaceful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. Another thing I was thinking about as you're speaking is just like, in line of the you know the radio show making college come true and your book making college come, Tr- come true 10 keys to success we haven't mentioned that you're the author of that well, thank you yeah to find <laughs> it on amazon um and you and being a person who made college come true in my life you know especially <laughs> super cool. ha- yeah. after all you know all these years uh, i had under my belt I, I i still needed someone like you to come along and like really help gently encourage me you know in the right direction and, um, you know, I imagine, you know, I, I know this is what you do with your kids, and I imagine this is what you do with your staff. So maybe, uh, you know, a success story you have of one of your students or maybe one of your staff that, you know, took your gentle encouragement and, and, and made their way to some special place. Oh, man, there's so many of those stories. I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my favorite stories that, that is in the book, Making College Come True, is the story of Valerie Enriquez, mm-hmm. the um, principal mm-hmm. of um, both Midvale and West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk about overachievers, and she's still in her mid-30s. So it's, yeah. it's just amazing what this girl's done. But when um, she interviewed for the teaching job, she, she was about 20 years old, 20, 21. And she said... Um, you know, she wanted to be a teacher, and I said, okay, so where are you at in your, in your education, and blah, blah, blah. We negotiated that part, and then she said, and, oh, just by the way, I'm going to I'm gonna be one of your principals. Mm. I Dang. Thought, oh, she affirmed it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I go, you are, it. huh, with a little whippersnapper. I <laughs> <my head. laughs> That's and funny. I thought, I like that. You know, uh-huh. I like uh-huh. people who are bold, who mm-hmm. will make that statement. Mm-hmm. So she made that statement, and guess what? Sure enough, she's been with me 16 years. Um, she is um, definitely a on fire. She's our, our senior 
principal Mm -hmm. and she's been a principal for like eight years. I mean, Mm. she's a young principal, Mm -hmm. but she got in her head because she likes education. She knows what's good for kids. She's naturally good at it. She's also good at systems and she knows how to interpret what the state of Arizona wants versus what the teachers need to do. So we all are happy Mm -hmm. with the output of the, of the schools, uh, the kids work. And so boy, she's just good at it. She's helped develop systems. She's, um, Mm -hmm. um, a a positive person. Um, and she's consistent. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would say consistency is her friend, that ability to be consistent and to always, um, be there and to always, uh, have a similar message. Like she's not one, she's not, um, you know, emotionally, uh, up and down all the time. Mm -hmm. She's just, stable yeah and that is like miracle and she's got so many um of her own stories of how she's impacted the lives of students mm-hmm. and how i mean yeah, we run into I them saw all that. the time i saw that the yeah. other day she what she posted on facebook and just oh yeah yeah that was, so that was really cool he, to see that he bought a truck yeah. yeah and i can see how you know yeah her positivity uh, i mean she had the kids do this for me and like yes. she really made my day so i appreciate her for that so much and um you know she she sees like the importance of like this work that the kids need to do and she ha- she has them do it. hey do a reflection do mm-hmm. what what did you learn from this and just to reinforce that information and when i saw this i saw the information these kids that said wow i didn't know my thoughts were that powerful yeah like uh-huh. and he said andres made it so simple for us that I understand that my thoughts create my feelings. And I was like, damn, like that's so they powerful. Got yeah, they, they got it. it. <laughs> they got it. But that's so cool to get it at such a young age. Yes, you yes, know what I mean? Like yes. I didn't get this stuff until I was like in my late twenties. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that thoughts created my feelings, but imagine getting it at a, at the age of 15, 16, uh, or 30. that's like, life changer. it was so cool. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to mm-hmm. go speak to them. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for Miss Andrew because, like, she's mm-hmm. doing really yeah, well. She's like, awesome. Yeah, she's really awesome. She's awesome. But she's got awesome staff. Everybody. I love my people. My people are the best. All yeah. of them. 